Are you tired of having to use secrets to store all your variable type values for GitHub Actions, even if the stuff isn't a secret? I am too. And guess what? We just released a beta of a solution for that problem called Configuration Variables. Let's dive into that some. Here we go. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and in today's video we are talking about the new beta release of configuration variables for GitHub Actions. We used to have to store configuration data such as usernames or compiler flags in secrets, and while this is okay and it works for non-sensitive information, it's kind of an overkill. Plus, when the data is stored as a secret, there's no easy way to see what the value is which is great for actual secrets, but a little bit of a pain with non-sensitive information. Configuration variables allow you to store your non-secret data as plain text variables that can be reused across workflows in your repository or your organization. Just like with secrets, you can define configuration variables at the organization, repository, or environment level. And where with secrets you use the keyword secrets to access them, with configuration variables, use the keyword vars. Okay, let's get to it and see configuration variables in action. Before I start the demo, I want to point out that configuration variables, as of this recording, were still in beta. So what you see here may change once configuration variables goes general availability. Just wanted to make you aware. Now, we want to start off by creating configuration variables at the organization level. So here I am in my organization, DevOps Elvis, and I'm going to go to Settings. I'm going to scroll down to Secrets and Variables. This used to just say Secrets. Now it says Secrets and Variables. So I'm going to select Actions. You can see I have two tabs, one tab for Secrets, one tab for Variables. So let's go into the Variables tab. Now I've already created two variables by clicking the green New Organization Variable button that's at the top right. My first variable, MyOrgVar1, is set to Elvis. This is the first change that you see from working with secrets. I can see the value in the GUI. And I have a second variable called MyVarWhoWins. I'm, de I'm declaring this variable, MyVarWhoWins, at both the organization, the repository, and the environment level so I can see who wins, which value is it going to use. Now I can also see that this variable is available to all repositories and I can edit it or delete it. So let's go edit this, this variable. The first thing I'm going to notice is it didn't blank the value. When you edit a secret, it automatically blanks the value and you can't get that value back. Here, because this is a a non-secret variable, it keeps the value. So you could either quit and not make a change or you could still make the change. You can also see that you can set these variables at the organization level with access to all repositories, access to only private and internal repositories, or access to just selected repositories. So we've declared these two variables at the organization level. Let's go see how we declare them at the repository level. So I'm going to click DevOps Elvis. And I'll go to repositories and I'll go to my YouTube video demos repository. And we're going to go to the repository settings. And we'll scroll down to secrets and variables again. And I'll select actions. You can see I have two tabs, secrets and variables. Now I'm going to click Variables. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and work my way up a little bit. First off, at the bottom we can see the organizational level variables that I have access to because we've granted my repository access to them. Next, you can see the repository level variables that I've created, which were created by clicking the green New Repository Variable. And in this case, I've created two variables. My repo var1, which I've set equal to the value of Jerry Rice, and my var who wins, 
which is the same variable name that we set at the organizational level. You can see we're already getting an indication in the GUI what's going to happen because it says that my var who wins at the organizational level, the variable has been overridden by a repository variable. And at the repository level, it says this variable overrides an organizational variable. Now, one thing to remember about repository level variables is they are available to all workflows in the repository. And then finally, we can see that we've declared two environment variables. And we can see the, the values, my env var1 is set to Jim Henson. And then once again, we've set my var who wins at the environment level to see which value is it going to use, organization, repo, or environment. Now remember, env environments are targeted by jobs. And there's stuff in the environments that have to be true in order for the job to run, such as manual approvals or coming from a certain branch. You can also have secrets and variables that are only available to a job if they target that particular environment. So on the left-hand side, if we select environments and we go into the dev environment, here's where we can set some of those rules. And here's where we can set environment level secrets. And you can see here's where we modify and configure our environment level variables. So these variables will only be available to jobs that are targeting this environment. So let's go look at an actual run of a workflow using these variables. So we'll go to code, we'll go to GitHub workflows, we'll select my configuration variable, we'll select configuration variables workflow. Now this workflow is being manually kicked off and we have two jobs. The first job is this build job is what I called it runs on Linux and it is outputting the my org var1 value the my repo var1 value and the my var who wins value so we're gonna see here which value is gonna win the repository level value or the organization level value for my var who wins now we kinda already know because we saw it in the GUI but we're gonna test it anyway now how we access these variables is similar to how we access secrets but with a different keyword. If you'll remember with secrets, we say secrets.secret name. Well with variables, you say vars.variable name. So to access my org var1, we say dollar sign curly brace curly brace vars v a r s dot variable name. Makes sense since secrets and variables are you know kind of related at least through the the settings area so we have vars has its own keyword now we also have a second job using environments that is targeting the dev environment so therefore it can access the values or the variables that have been set for that particular environment so here you can see we're outputting my env var1 and then we're also going to output my var who wins to see which value is going to be written out the environment level value the repo level value or the organization level value so let's go run this we'll go to actions select configuration variables and we'll click run workflow and run it against the main branch now you can wait a couple of seconds and this will pop up or you can just click configuration variables again and it'll pop up if we click into the run, because we have two jobs, by default they're going to run in parallel. So they should both run relatively quickly, depending on how fast they can get a, a runner. And they're both done. So let's look at the results. Here we can see that it output my org var Elvis, my repo var Jerry Rice, which we expected, and the my var who wins is at the repo level which is what we expected. So let's go to using environments and see what happens. And in using environments, we wrote out my env var1, which is Jim Henson, and the my var who wins is the environment level variable. So just like with secrets, if the lowest level wins, so if you have the same variable declared at the organization, repository, and environment level, environment level go, goes first, repo level goes second, organization level goes last. Now, I have one more question for you that has absolutely nothing to do with configuration variables. 
over here, I output Elvis and I output Jerry Rice. Elvis being Elvis, Jerry Rice being a famous football player. And then over here, I output Jim Henson, Jim Henson who created the Muppets. So my question to you is this, what do all three of these people have in common? If you think you know the answer, leave a comment below in the video. Now, don't look at what other people have commented, just leave your own comment, and let's see how many people know what these three people have in common. And I'll come back in a couple of days and I'll pin a comment to the top with the answer. I hope you've enjoyed this video on configuration variables with GitHub Actions. If so, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.